Hey everyone, welcome back! The Hespar video is finally here. Much delayed, but understandably so. If you've seen my recent streams, you'll know I shelled this weapon for later because, well, it kinda gives the vibes of Ghoul Saw 2.0. I have four different build setups to show you today, but based on the length of this video, I think you can guess what my overall opinion on our newest melee archetype is. As a reminder, all of my content is geared towards Space Steel Path as a minimum and scales up from there. If you're looking for star chart builds, I'm sorry, but I don't cover that content. Let's look at the stat breakdown. Our Hespar has 24% crits, 28% status splits with a 2.2 crit multiplier. There are no standouts, but this does scream hybrid weapon, solid stats we can work with that are above average. We're playing with 1.0 attack speed, which doesn't really mean anything since this is the only weapon in its class so far, but it will give us a picture of average attack speed on this archetype. It does only have 2.8 meter range though, which is somewhat concerning for a quote-unquote heavy scythe. I would have expected 3 to 3.5 meters for something this unwieldy. It's got a great 280 base damage and the first thing I noticed about this weapon. With 134.4 slash, it's 48% slash. I sure hope the stance has some force slash though because this is a bit on the low side and a sure candidate for Karnas Mandible. The breakpoints are usually any weapon with above 60% natural slash weight doesn't need Karnas. Anything in 40 to 60% slash weight needs Karnas, but anything under 40% doesn't really benefit enough from Karnas to justify the slot. The non use cases have to do with the weapon either already slashing enough that adding Karnas barely increases slash weight, or the slash weight is so low that adding Karnas barely adds any more slash procs. Say, a 50% slash weight is actually the sweet spot for when to use the mod. For example, a weapon with 80% slash and adding Karnas on increases to. 88.37 slash, or 1.1 times more slash procs than before. And you're already slashing a lot to start with, so it barely helps. A weapon with 20% slash and adding Karnas on increases to 32.2 slash weight, or 1.61 times more slash procs, but you still only slash 32.2% of the time, which is really poopy and not useful. A 50% slash weapon with Karnas increases to 65.6% or 1.31 times more slash procs. And you're also now slashing two thirds of the time in general, which makes the DPS much more consistent. Hespar is basically the poster child of good candidates for Karnas, but this also means we lose a mod slot to fix the slash distribution on the weapon, which limits its DPS output compared to if the weapon was just over 60% slash weight to start with. But if you aren't using a slash weapon, then this doesn't matter, so the first build we'll take a look at is a corrosive build, so let's take a peek. Keep in mind this build has a rank 3 shocking touch, summing up to 225% corrosive instead of 255%. Factoring the innate damage of the weapon itself, this is less than a 10% total DPS loss, so what I show here should still be an accurate representation of a full build. Reason why I didn't add one more forma? I don't use corrosive melee builds, and none of the other builds I'm showing today lack mod capacity on a 3 forma build. Anyways, the weapon still has weeping wounds on it because if you face anything that for some reason doesn't die, you will be hacking away at it proccing corrosive stacks to reduce their armor further. This Hespar has 151.2% status at 12x combo, aka it passes 100% status at 8x combo. If you don't want to go the combo route, which I would strongly recommend because this weapon desperately wants crit help from Blood Rush, then you can slot a paltry sacrificial steal and you'll get to 76.8% crit. And then you can also drop Weeping and Shocking Touch for the 260-60 Corrosive mods to reach 61.6% .6 status. Again, I wouldn't recommend this because it's massively weaker than just building the 12x comp with 129.6% crit and 151.2% status. Quickening to help build combo faster on a slower archetype while also granting faster combo building and prime reach for a much more acceptable 5.8 meters poke. If it wasn't clear, this build is intended for base steel path and is a condition overload build, meaning you will need a primer, usually a Kuva Nucor or an Epitaph. This weapon is not strong enough to solo DPS without a primer due to shitty slash distribution. And well, let's just look at Gale Force Dawn. Poop stance with poop modifiers. The neutral melee Storm Reaper feels very clunky to use and only has a single 200% slash proc. That's okay, but the combo takes 3.1 seconds to run and averages to 294.1% normalized damage per second. 
It's not like the Hesper has the 1.0 follow through stat of the Ghoul Saw, and it also doesn't have the insane 400 plus base damage that the Tenet Agendas has either. So why are these stance multipliers so low and slow? The one actually feel-good combo on this weapon is the forward melee, or bleak winnowing. However, this is also the weakest combo on the entire stance. At 225.6% normalized damage per second, and has absolutely zero force procs on it of any kind. Why do you do things like this, Steve? Like, yes, the weapon feeling good is important, and quite honestly, I greatly enjoy the forward melee. But this is an objectively shit stance. Don't even look at the moving block combo. It only has 200% in Force Slash, and it does 267.5% normalized damage per second, over 4.9 seconds. 4.9 seconds. Do you realize how insanely long that is? Have we ever had a stance combo last longer than this? The neutral block combo is the same as the neutral melee because they were lazy and didn't make a fourth unique normal attack animation. That kinda says a lot about the stance. The heavy attack consists of two swings, the first being a triple hit for 200 times 3 with one force slash and one force impact and a knockdown. Followed by two hits in the second swing at 600% each, a heavy attack with 1200% damage with just 200% force slash. So this means the heavy combo is shits. The neutral melee, block combo and moving block combo are also all shit and actually feel banned to use. The moving melee feels good, but has shit multipliers. This is Tenet Livia all over again. We have an amazing weapon that actually has potential with only slight flaws, Livia being literally perfect, but Hespar just having slightly too low slash, but then both weapons are completely ruined by their stances. I'm certain if Hespar could equip Sovereign Outcast, the popular Tonfa stance, this would have been a titan of a weapon beyond par with Kratos for DPS, which itself is about 80% of Cronin Primes, even if you ignore its endless list of quality of life aspects and we know how strong Cronin is. Literally, DE just stop giving us shit stances for new weapon archetypes and people will actually use the new melees more. Hespar itself is a decent weapon, give it a proper stance so that it can do what it's supposed to do. Rant end, let's move on to the next build. Hey look, returning to our viral slash builds. This is a standalone melee build that doesn't need a primer because it self primes viral. This already has better scaling damage than the Krosa build, however it has very very poor upfront damage since it relies on slash to kill. And you're even giving up two mod slots for viral to proc and boost the bleeds when viral damage itself is useless against armored enemies and also doesn't directly boost bleed damage like how base damage, factions, and crits, etc. do. Viral procs are a status effect that can be procced by anything, and not a property of the weapon itself like crits damage and banes. So by not offloading viral to a primer, you pay the convenience of a single weapon build by reduced DPS. We're also forced to derank viral to keep slash as the main weight since viral in the weapon dilutes the amount of slash procs we will get, and any viral procs past the 10th is wasted since viral is capped, whereas slash isn't. Just keep that in mind if you use this build. But there is one other problem with this build though. Can you see it? It has no attack speed. You can give up whatever you want on the build if you want to slot it on, but I personally still recommend Quickening over Prime Fury since it gives 40%, and faster combo building since this weapon really wants to be at high combo to make up for the shit stance. But what would you drop? Well, personally, I didn't equip it because you can offload attack speed to Arcane Strike on your frame, which is basically guaranteed to proc. None of these other mons can be replaced by an arcane, but if you had to pick and say you hate banes, you can drop the prime to bane for attack speed, but realize you will do 2.4 times less damage on bleeds, which is your main source of DPS. Condition Overload will proc off Viral Slash and Impact from this weapon super easily and possibly Puncture as well, granting 240 to 320% base damage, which is significantly more than Prime Pressure Point. The reason why I normally recommend using primers, especially in Steel Path, is not only do they prime more status effects for your condition overload than your DPS weapon can equip, and also not wasting slots that could boost your bleed damage more, but they can also spread crowd control status effects like cold, radiation, heat, or electric, all which have various degrees of reducing the amount of enemy aggro directed at you. This is where a dedicated primer plus Hesper build comes in for slash DPS, and that build would look like this. This is a very generic raw slash build. The only exception compared to normal slash melee that actually has over 60% base slash is that I need to slot Karnas Mandible to fix the slash distribution on Hespar. 
The Karna slot is usually flex slot for either Gladiator Might or Spring Loaded Blade, except you would never run Spring Loaded Blade on Hespar because of this weapon's shit point four follow through stat. And shit stance, it makes it not worth with Primed Reach already present since your damage will be reduced to nothing. The third enemy you hit only takes 16% damage, the fourth only takes 6.4%. Compared to Prados with 0.6 follow through, the third enemy would still be taking 36% damage and the fourth taking 21.6, or literally more than triple of the fourth enemy for Hespar. It really is a shame you can't slot Gladiator Might to make up for the slightly lacking crit. Hespar is the exact opposite of Prados, which a lot of people like to popularly say is a bad weapon when, quite honestly, it's one of our best weapons in the game, since it has amazing slash distribution, insane stance multipliers with tons of 4 slash procs, and while low, is actually average at a 0.6 follow through stat. Compared to the viral slash build, the pure slash has only dropped the two viral mods for quickening and carnus. This thing becomes pretty fast and feels a lot better stacking quickening with arcane strike. You can see the pure slash build with a primer significantly faster cleaning out enemies even if you're constantly swapping between primer and melee compared to the viral slash build. Because gun melee swap has no holster time, unlike gun to gun swapping. You should optimally be priming as much as you can when your melee isn't in range to hit enemies yet to minimize melee DPS downtime. Now how about one last build, a hybrid 12x light heavy attack build? The weapon only has 200% slash out of the 1200% it does on heavy attacks and has a massive windup, making this a prohibitively annoying weapon to use as such, but this is the build I made for it if you want to use it. We don't have free slots to slot on Karnas, so you will have to prey on that 48% slash weight when you swing through that 1200%. That means about 576% of the damage inflicted per heavy swing will be used to proc slash, which ironically is literally triple the amount of slash the stance itself will proc, meaning the stance doesn't give that much slash compared to the weapon, and will be well over 100% status at 12x combo, so that 576% damage scaling might proc slash even more than once per hit. Condition overload is still required because unlike normal sights, not heavy sights, normal sights that do 1200% with 4 slash on all of the heavy attack damage, or rapiers, which also do something similar at 1000% 4 slash, Hespar sits at a paltry forced 200%. So if you don't beef up your raw damage in Prime, your heavy attack will tickle for the amount of time you spent winding up versus just spamming light attacks. In fact, this weapon has a base 1 second wind up, so Amalgam Organ Shatter is literally mandatory on this weapon to even function on a heavy build. Since not only is the wind up 1.0 seconds, but we've learned the weapon archetype itself, even outside of the wind up swings slowly, in general. So we need to combine both attack speed and wind up. Primed Bane once again for 2.4 times more damage on bleeds, Primed Reach so you can actually hit enemies since 2.8 meter range sucks, and Reflex Colon for that 60% heavy efficiency. Now, since we no longer have Xenrix 60% efficiency to combine with Reflex Hole to camp it out at 90%, I've opted for Quickening over Prime Fury which offers 20% combo count chance to build back up to 12x quickly. If you don't intend to use light attacks to spam at all whatsoever on this build, you can drop Blood Rush for Sacrificial Steel. So you always get 440% crit chance on heavy attacks since it will double dip there, but you really only benefit on this by heavy attacking below 12x combo which you shouldn't be doing often. There you go, 4 separate builds for Hespar on various different playstyles and uses. I hope you like this in-depth look at Hespar and its new stance. Once again, DE has outdone themselves in introducing an actually decent melee into the game, and then pairing it with a piece of shit stance that ruins what the weapon can offer. You wanted us to appreciate the animations. Only the forward melee combo even looks good and feels good, much less the fact that every single combo, including the heavy modifier, being horrible damage-wise. Will we ever get a stance fix? Well. Wise Razor is still waiting and Butcher's Revelry also remains untouched. We can only hope. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always. As soon as possible, like I'm done with covering the new Angels of Zeraman update. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You won't miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching and see you all next time.